What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host a podcast across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime for Season 2, Part 2. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, Part 2, Season 2, Episode 37. Y'all, this, oh, we've been anticipating this episode. It's great. Oh, so good. Oh, it lived up to my expectations. Oh, the first part, they were showing Veldora, the part that they left off on the last episode. And Veldora, he has so much energy. He had so much personality. I feel like his personality changed from being in Rimuru, reading all that manga. <laughs> He's just taking in all that manga culture, absorbing it, and manifested in this new Veldora. It's just great. While in the cave, Eldora and Rimuru they were able to catch up, and it turns out that Rimuru he has ultimate skills, four ultimate skills: Raphael, Lord of Wisdom; Eldora, Lord of Storms; Beezebub, Lord of Gluttony; and Uriel, Lord of Vows. So it's like, yo! Even though Rimuru seems like he's getting kind of OP, it it seems like there are other people who are more powerful and it's like this world is a lot bigger than we thought it is or was it is was whatever and i'm just wondering how these uh four ultimate skills would play out for this season part two because we've seen some of this stuff play out and such but now we got Vildora, Lord of Storms, and you're a Lord of Vows. I'm excited to see what the Lord of Vows is gonna play out. I'm like, ooh, because they did mention like the unlimited imprisonment. I'm going I'm thinking, who is who is Rimuru gonna use the unlimited prison imprisonment on? Who claim it? Claim it? Claim it? After catching up a little bit, they leave the cave and Rimuru is asking Vildora to like tone down his aura because you know the auras they intimidate people and when they're intimidated they're scared and Rimuru doesn't want people to be scared of Vildora so he asked Vildora to like tone it down right and then Vildora was getting like super fancy with toning down his aura he actually looked like he was exploding his aura kind of like something from Dragon Ball Z with like the Saiyans and such when they go Super Saiyan and whatnot and it looked like he was making his aura bigger so he can cover the Drew of Horrors with it to protect it like he did before unintentionally with his aura and that's why it was repelling people but no he was actually shrinking it and it totally looked like a scene from Dragon Ball when they um collect the dragon balls and they make a wish and the dragon pops up it looked like a dragon was gonna make a wish was gonna grant a wish but then the dragon was getting smaller and smaller and that represented Vildora's aura and then Vildora was like how's that is it small enough now and Rima's like yep that's small enough when Vildora was manipulating his aura to make it smaller I actually thought he was making it bigger because it looked like he was making it bigger and I thought he was doing that you know so he can cover the whole force with his aura again and protect it repel people but no 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 it was quite the opposite and now that Vodora's aura is toned down and not intimidating anymore they can go and meet up with the others and it was a festival there's food everywhere and we know Vodora he wants to eat that food because he's been watching through Rimuru's eyes he's been reading it in the manga and you know he he wants to taste this stuff he couldn't taste it before but now he can and Rimuru introduces him to the others and they're like what and they don't know how to react and then the drives came along and they're like hello lord Vildora what's up and everybody's like holy cow it's Vildora and they're like yo how Rimuru how do you know Vildora and Vildora's like he is my bosom buddy my other 
half my sworn friend. And it's so cute because I think they're each other's first friends in this world. I believe that's what it was. And they even have like a fist bump thing going on. Like, oh! So much uh, references to previous episodes that it's just invoking all those happy feelings that I had when I saw those episodes. Oh, it's oh, so good. So good. And this just makes people need to see the other episodes so they can appreciate these scenes. They're so good. But when Vildora's like explained his relationship with Rumoru, you can tell he's really proud that he's Rumoru's friend, his sworn friend. You can tell that he's really proud of being Rumoru's first friend when Rimu came to this world and it totally reminds me of Milim when she's like Rimu is my best friend like they are so similar I'm like wondering is this a dragon thing <laughs> after the introduction of Adora and explaining how Adora came about why he has a human form and such it comes to the part where Rimu and Benimaru have to eat Xion's Food. Because if you remember in the last episode, Benimaru and Rimuru, they had like a password thing in case Rimuru's personality changed. They had a password phrase and it pertains to Hyun's uh, cooking and such and how not so great it is. And Hyun was like, you know what? You guys are going to taste my cooking. You're going to taste it. And they're like, no! That scene was so funny. Oh my gosh. Because Benimaru was like, gonna let Rimu just take all the hit of eating the food but then Rimu was able to bring him in too it's like I am not going down alone oh that was so funny so it's that scene that scene to taste eat Xion's cooking you know we love Xion you know she passed away she came back to life you know if I was them I'll eat all her cooking because we love her you know we, we love that girl and it looks disgusting they are scared of eating it and we've kind of learned that she's bad at cooking because she only uses her sword and Rima is like but there's you know proper tools for cooking they're called knives cooking knives and Xion explains that she only uses one weapon she'll only use one blade and she'll use it for cooking and anything else and that's why she's bad at cooking because she's not properly uh prepping the food with the right tools <laughs> but that still doesn't explain the purple goo of uh, that's like a soup base kind of thing uh, that yeah that doesn't explain it but anyways they eat the food and it's actually good it's actually good this is why she was like pushing it pushing them to eat it while she's like oh you're gonna learn mm -hmm. you say my cooking's bad i'll show you now we know why she had that attitude it's because when she was revived she got a unique skill and it was called master chef or something like that and anything she makes will taste good no matter how bad looking it is and it's like yo this could uh <laughs> i'm i'm not sure how this can Come into play later on for uh, fights and whatnot, but I think truthfully she wanted this skill so she could cook for Rimuru because uh, the other girl she's really good at cooking. Rimuru always likes it; they're always looking forward to her cooking. I think Xion wanted a skill that could benefit Rimuru, that something that he'll like, be happy about, be proud of her of. Because, you know, she really likes to serve him. Like, you know, she, she's a secretary, okay? She's his secretary. And um, I think she just wants to do a lot of stuff for him. And I think that's really endearing. After the festival, the celebration, the next day it was the meeting. Rimuru had everyone together. And he announces that, that he's going to be a demon lord. And everyone's like, but you are a demon lord. He's like, no, that's not what I mean. And he's saying he wants to announce to the whole world that he's a demon lord. And me, I'm like, so you want, you just want people to know you're a demon lord? Like, are you concerned of how they're going to think what everyone is? Because demon lords have a bad name. Like, what's the, what's the big deal about you being a demon lord? And it's explained later on that Rimuru is 
planning to fight against the demon lords. And the plan is to fight against Clayman and take his title of demon lord. Because I guess there's like known demon lords. There's a difference. There's like the known ones, like the ones that people are scared of, like titles. I guess people of position. I guess there's like a table of demon lords and they're the top dogs or the well-known people that the established established demon lords not no minion demon lord the demon lord okay the top boss kind of thing so i guess rimuru is planning to attack claimant take his title and he's getting everyone together to attack so he's gonna bring in his peeps and then he's gonna take in yom have him be the king of Falmouth and have that kingdom help him out. And then the Biscuiteers have their people and apparently Lord Carrion, the leader of the Beast Kingdom, who I thought was dead, is not dead. I'm like, wait, what, what? Wait, you guys made it look like he died. And I was like, oh, he didn't really die. You know, they made it look like he died. They're gonna do like a surprise thing. But they're saying that he got captured and he needs to be rescued. So I'm assuming they're going to rescue him and bring him in. Have him and his people who are being refugees in the, the forest, the Jira forest. And have them help out with this attack to the demon lord Clayman. And then during this meeting, uh, the human, the guy, I think uh, from Belmont. Uh, he comes in, he's like, I'm here from the Alliance. I'm here to help you out to fight against Falmouth and the church. And Rimuru is like, oh, no, we're good. Okay, that passed by. So now we got an army here. Okay, they're going to help out <laughs> with this attack to Clayman. And then Rimuru senses that someone's coming and it's the people from the Dwarf Kingdom. They're going to help out. They want to join in. They're backing up Rimuru, I guess because of the alliance. And then as he's talking to the dwarf guy, the dwarf king senses someone coming in and it's elves. Elves. Okay. It's like, how many factions are we going to have here? How many kingdoms are going to unite with Rimuru? And the elves, they were there at first because... Uh, the leader and Archduke is Aaron's dad. The Aaron's an elf and she's from nobility. Apparently she's the daughter of an Archduke and he was there because he thought Rimuru took his daughter and this guy, he went overprotective mode. He was like, my daughter, bring her back, kind of thing. And after everything got squared away, like all the misunderstandings got cleared up. He's like, I want to join in too. So it's like, brah, this is a lot. No wonder this is called visitors, but it took a while to get to the visitors part. Okay. <laughs> we got more comedy into this with the elves, with this overprotective father. And for some reason he has like this homunculus, like human uh, body thing. I guess it's where he can go incognito, gather information or whatnot. And when I saw that, I totally thought about the Queen of Spirits, the Demon Lord Queen of Spirits, because she likes to make homunculus or stuff like that, right? So I'm thinking, okay, maybe she's going to be brought in and something's going to be made with that, you know, Queen of Spirits, Demon Lord, or Demon else to make something. Ooh, it's like this episode is prepping us for stuff. Us for Queen of Spirits, what else? Monculus making bodies and whatnot. Uh, prepping us about the Biscuiteers, Lord Carrion. I don't know what's going on with that, but something's gonna happen. Prepping us for Redora, Dragons, Malim. Okay, so much stuff, so much foreshadowing, so much theorizing. Oh, it's so good. And after all these people showed up, the episode ends. It's like, no, it felt short. I don't know why it felt short. It wasn't really that short. Maybe it felt so short because so many stuff was happening and not a lot, not a lot of explanation was happening. Maybe that's why I, I'm not too sure. But the ending scene 
for the show, we see Rimuru standing there. It's nighttime. He's looking off to the distance. But if you notice the eyes, they were red. And then correct me if I'm wrong, red indicates that Raphael took over the body. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking Raphael is going to do something in Season 2 Part 2. Yep. I feel like something's going to happen. And I'm excited because Raphael is the... You know, you know, you saw Raphael take over the body when Rimu became the demon lord. Raphael took over the body when he, like, is it he? He? She? Sounds like a she, but it's a, I think it's a he. Uh, revived everyone? Rah! Something's going on. And I'm very excited for this season. And so far, this is my review of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Season 2, Part 2, Episode 37. If there's anything I missed that you guys wanted to talk about, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the episode. What you think about this video. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on Twitch.tv slash LeHuoSuperfino. If people watch these videos, if you like to stop by my streams, have that one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation, you guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, links to the podcast is in the description. We are available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this is the Superfina channel reviewing that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2, part 2, episode 37. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.